Okay, but it's a bit silly being told after the event that there's been a problem. So what I'm about to show you now is the configuration behind the scenes. And this is where Clever Logger becomes um, so much better than a traditional temperature logger. So with a traditional temperature logger, you have to unplug it, plug it into your computer, have a look at the results. Up until now, what I've shown you is that with Clever Logger, you need to download, uh, so you need to log in to look at a graph, or you need to wait until a report is sent to you. By that stage, the horse is bolted. Your vaccines or your food is wasted. So what we're gonna do now is we wanna send you an alert the moment your fridge is too hot, the moment your fridge is too cold. Um, so I'm gonna dive in, show you a couple of things of the configuration screen. Keep in mind that all of this is automatically set up for you, but the reason why I'm going through it now is to start to explain to you the power and the flexibility that Clever Logger allows you to have. And so to do that, I'm gonna dive back into my locations. I'm gonna select my location and up here I've got the options and I've got the edit button. So I'm gonna go in, edit this particular location. Um, straight away, the things that you notice, you can configure the name of the location, make it meaningful to you, make it meaningful to whoever's gonna get this alert at 3 a.m. in the morning. So in this case, it's Acme Fridge. Uh, the very first thing that we allow you to control is how often you record the temperature. Uh, for most of our customers, the default of five minutes is absolutely perfect. Um, some people slow it down. My recommendation is there's really no need to. Um, the storage of data is free for you, so you might as well collect it every five minutes. Some of our customers need to take it down to once a minute. Uh, and because we're trying to keep the, um, the amount of data stored at a fair compromise, you won't be able to do it necessarily through the front end. If you need to do it faster, just contact us and we'll enable one minute logging for you. But keep from, in mind, strive for five, um, five minutes is the requirement. In hospitality, they tend to focus on 15 minutes. Our recommendation is stick to five minutes. Okay, so log the interval every five minutes. This is where Clever Logger now starts to come into its own. So low temperature alarms. Um, first of all, you can enable or disable these alarms. So if you don't want this functionality, just turn it off. And we won't be uh, sending you notifications telling you that your fridge is too hot or too cold, um, but instead we'll still just be logging the data for you. So here we go, so enable the alarm. What is my threshold for this point being too cold? Now for um, vaccines, chances are vaccine fridge, two degrees, eight degrees, so you'd set the threshold to um, two degrees. Um, if it's hospitality, you tend to want to try and keep everything between zero and five degrees, so zero degrees um, type threshold. Um, when you're setting up a new system, we ask you, what are you monitoring? And if you say a vaccine fridge, we'll automatically set this up for you, so you don't have to know it. Uh, but you can come in, as I'm doing now, and modify it to suit yourself. Okay, so threshold, zero degrees. The second thing, though, is we know that you will come along and open the door and restock or grab things or whatever. So we know that the temperature will occasionally spike up or um, it won't spike down. If it's spiking down, talk to us, there's something going wrong. Um, but especially for high temperature alarms, it will spike up. So rather than the moment that we know that it's too hot, we instantly go, oh, we've got a problem. What we can do is put in a delay. And so in this case, we've got a 10 minute delay. So what that actually means is, if we notice that your fridge is too hot once, we'll ignore it. But once it's been too hot for 10 minutes, then we'll be going, oh, wait a minute, now we've got a problem. Let's generate the alarm. So, um, so just being too hot or too cold isn't enough to create an alarm. It has to be too hot or too cold for a certain amount of time. And keep in mind, you can take that down to zero. So the moment that it gets too hot or too cold, we will generate an alarm. Our recommendation, 10 minutes, is just enough to throw off that single spike up or down, and that's a good thing. But what are we going to do with it? And so the way Clever Logger works is we've got this concept of a notification group. So for most of our users, there tends to be just the one person who's uh, using the system. And so this doesn't make a huge difference. 
uh, it's just there, it's all fine. But if you've got a larger organization um, where you might, you know, even just a GP, you might still have the receptionist being notified, the practice manager, and maybe uh, one or two of the doctors. So now you've got four or five people that you wanna notify that there's a problem. And so we have this concept of a notification group. And you can add as many people into a notification group as you like. Um, it's up to you. There's no limits on Cleverlogger as to how many users you have. Um, it, just add more users. Uh, it's free, go for it. So we've got a notification group. Um, in this case, I've called it admin group. And what's gonna happen is that uh, everyone in this notification group is going to be told straight away, that is after the 10 minute delay to create the alarm, but once the alarm's created, straight away, we're gonna tell you that there's a problem. We're gonna send you an email, and if you've installed the app on your phone, we're gonna send a notification to your phone to tell you that there's a problem. So you're gonna get this email, your fridge is too cold, your fridge is too warm. And then we, um, we're gonna do more than that. We're going to do that again 30 minutes later. Uh, and we're gonna do that 30 minutes later and 30 minutes later. So you can say um, uh, either never repeat or um, repeat until it's acknowledged, repeat until it's ended, whatever the case may be. So there's a bunch of repeat options. Um, so something like my fridge is too hot or too cold, um, you might decide just to do a repeat until it's acknowledged. That is the first person says, yes, I know about it, stop nagging me, and then we'll stop telling you about it. We've still got the alarm in the system, we just will stop sending you emails and stop notifying your phone. But you might actually say, no, this is so important, we want to pester people until they fix the problem. And so we can do that, it's up to you. We will continually remind your staff until either they say, yes, I know about it, or yes, I've fixed the problem, up to you. Um, and so, um, so that's it. Um, notification groups, um, repeat intervals, and you can add as many users as you like. A little bit of trivia here, most people don't use this feature, but you can actually have multiple notification groups. And what you can actually do is say, start notifying this group first, and then if they don't do anything about it after an hour or two, notify this group. And that's a really cool way of escalating the problem. And keep in mind, that second group it might be just a matter of sending them an email once, hey, there's been a problem on this site, and you don't have to repeat it, and that could be something like head offers, being told that there was a problem on site so long that it wasn't dealt with that um, head office has now been notified about it. So it's that sort of concept. Most of you don't use it, but that's what it's for. Okay, and so that's the notification groups. Uh, a little bit of trivia if anyone's actually watching this as an instructional video we've got edit there so that you can get straight in and add uh, more users into that group without having to go through other places high temperature screen looks exactly the same as the low temperature screen so um, what's really good is as you see this once you know how to do one they're all exactly the same so high temperature low temperature high humidity low humidity if you've got the humidity loggers and in this particular case we've got a battery alarm so once we know that the battery needs to be replaced we'll automatically notify you after a year um, who's going to be notified and um, so once again enabled who's going to be notified repeat all of this is exactly the same low battery Okay, now I, I just wanna pause here for a second and I wanna talk about a really, really critical issue. And that is the way that Clever Logger works is that ad loggers talk to the gateway, which then talks to your network, either via ethernet or Wi-Fi, which then talks to our cloud server. And what you're looking at here isn't what's going on on site, it's what we know about in our cloud server. Um, and so we've got the problem of, well, what happens if something happens on site, you lose power or you, you lose your internet, and now we've got the problem that we don't know what's actually happening in the logger. Um, so we know that there's a problem, oh, sorry, we know that we're not communicating, but we don't know whether or not there's a temperature problem, we just know that there's a problem. 
could be lack of power, could be lack of internet, could just be um, someone disconnected it. I don't know. We, we don't know. But what will happen is that after five minutes, we're expecting the logger to talk to the gateway to talk to us, and it's not happening. So we've got this offline alarm. So what we do then is we can notify you, once again via email or notification to your phone, saying, hey, your devices are offline. We don't know what's up with your fridge. Fridge may be fine. Fridge may be having a problem. We just can't talk to it. And uh, in a large number of cases, it's because you've got a blackout or you've got some problem on site. Um, and you may not necessarily be able to fix it, but we've alerted you to it. Um, so um, it's offline alarms. We do it for the gateway. We do it for the individual locations as well. Um, so it's the way of, hey, there's a problem. You need to do something. It may or may not have to do with your fridge. Just telling you. Okay. Um, the second thing that I really, really need to stress though is once we've got this information through and, um, and sorry, once we get your logger back online, we are going to get all the missing data. So as soon as you bring the logger back online, either the power comes back on or the internet's turned back on or the device is plugged back in again, whatever the case may be, it comes online, we're going to have all the missing data uploaded. So you can see exactly what's going on during the problem. The only problem is you'll have that data afterwards. So there's a couple of recommendations. If you are having a power failure, if you are having some known problem, just don't use your fridge. Like, you know, just restrict how much time you've got in it. Just assume that you've got a problem and you need to be dealing with that problem. Um, we're also adding a feature, and chances are by the time you watch this video, the feature will be there, where you'll be able to walk up with your phone and be able to download the um, results from the logger to your phone um, using your phone's uh, data access, which tends to still be there. Um, so it relies you being on site, but you don't necessarily have to have that power or data on site. So if you're about to open the fridge, you want to know what's happening, we can tell you that. Um, there are other systems on the market that will um, use a 3G or 4G connection to have your data automatically going up even in the event of a local data power failure. Um, we don't provide that, or at the time of making this video, we don't provide that. Um, but what it also means is that we are hundreds of dollars a year cheaper because we're using your network. And as soon as the data is available again, we will do the missing data. Okay, slight tangent there. Um, but it's one of those big questions, what happens when there's a power failure? And so this is what we do.